is the book. Um, it's uh, called Dance of Connection by Harriet Lerner, and um, it's um, it's a guide on how to talk to people when you feel upset, when you feel angry, when you feel scared, offended, etc. So how to talk when you are not in your best mood necessarily. So yeah. The book has almost 15 um, chapters, so to speak. Um, it's dedicated to Harriet's best friends. Um, so, uh, the beginning of the book starts with a very cute story uh, about <laughs> Harriet watching two kids playing in the uh, playing in the sand and she noticed that kids have this tendency of um, uh, uh, not not setting into a conflict state as adults do and they were fighting and one of the kids says I hate you, I hate you and in five minutes after that they just made peace and started to play again so uh, she told that when kids do that they choose happiness instead of being right so she says that we as adults would have something to learn from the kids uh, because as adults we feel this need to always be right always fight to be right and uh, we, we choose to do that instead of being happy so a lot of pain could be avoided so Harriet says that the challenge um, that we have to face is the challenge of uh, developing uh, an inner voice so in order to learn how to um, fight better we have to have this inner voice so uh, developing the inner voice will allow us to choose if we want to pursue talking uh, while mad or walk away we will be able to decide if we want to speak or not but as you probably noticed uh, in angry times most of the times we keep on talking and that's because uh, our inner voice it's still not strong enough so Harriet Lerner is going to uh, learn us <laughs> How to find this inner voice. So chapter number one, how to find your voice. So Harriet says that what what's um, this concept of well talking, of having a good conversation. So um, to talk well means to ask questions to uh, to say an idea to clarify your wishes your beliefs your values and your personal limitations uh, very few people actually do this when they are having a fight uh, they usually get flooded and start talking 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 and end up only hurting each other so uh, Harriet says that after we'll be reading this book, um, we will manage, <laughs> she guarantees us, so that's a good thing, she guarantees us that we'll be managed, we'll manage to have better talks when uh, we will be angry and fighting. So, uh, she says that we can influence the other uh, through what we're saying and through what we are not saying but we can never control the outcome that means that you can't be the nicest person in an argument and still not win or influence the other so just think about that uh, think about you're doing the best that you can but don't expect uh, amazing 
amazing results right away. So, what does it mean to have a voice? What's what's that thing? Um, I must tell you that Harriet Lerner in this book, uh, actually, the whole book is about finding this voice of yours. This is the thing that most of us are missing when we are having an argument. We don't uh, find our voice. So having an authentic voice in a relationship means we can openly talk about our abilities but also about our problems and vulnerabilities. We can stimulate and calm things down. We can listen and we can ask questions. We can say what we feel and what we think. We can uh, uh, give the other the same possibility. We can define our values, our beliefs. We can define what we believe we have the right to receive in a relationship and to clarify the limitations on what we are going to tolerate or accept. And we can walk away, what, uh, which means that we have financial and emotional autonomy if in case that we need. So this is having a voice. Having a voice doesn't mean to yell, to scream, to say I hate you or I'll divorce you or I walk away or no having a voice your true inner voice means to be able to calmly stand up for what you believe and allow the other to do the same without trashing each other so that's what a voice means so being authentic doesn't mean always to be yourself, but always to choose that self that we want to be. Uh, Harriet says that the noble way to discover and reinventing the self goes through our relationship with other people. So she says that only through relationships we actually get to discover ourselves too. So choosing a uh, loneliness and solitude and yeah that's not gonna help you grow personally so she says that uh, if a relationship is very important we tend to actually as a paradox we tend to uh, have limited conversations that's very bad so uh, she says and i really loved this quote uh, she says that our ability to tell our own truth is the essence of intimacy and of personal dignity. So yes, that's why people are not staying in relationships where they can't do that because they feel uh, humiliated. So everybody wants this kind of relationship where you can talk really intimate things with the other. So... Harriet says that it's wise to follow a strategy when you're having an argument. Don't always be spontaneous. It's not always good to uh, speak your mind every time. Um, so if you have a strategy, you can learn when it's time to give up and walk away. Um, and sometimes walk away is the equivalent of salvation, the salvation of yourself. Um, even if you lose a relationship, we'll see that if that it's a very important thing. You never should allow yourself to end up in that place where um, where you just uh, choose the relationship over choosing yourself, your own sanity. So yeah. So it's very very important that the, uh, to discover this voice um, and. When we do, when we do, what's the advantage of working towards this idea of finding our voice? We can be able to form a better image and a more complex image about ourselves and the other. Most of the times we have the wrong idea. Uh, we can talk with honor, when with integrity, even when the other person is behaving badly. So, if a person behaves badly and you keep on behaving badly too, that means you haven't found that inner voice, that voice that is able to calm you down, that voice that is able to make you uh, feel 
better with yourself if you behave good with a person that behaves badly, if you know what I mean. So finding that voice will help you give and receive love. So this is not only for women. This is not a guide only for women. It's also for men. Um, actually, when a marriage ends, the, uh, most of the times the man is, uh, is the one that is at uh, its breaking point. Uh, especially if the wife is the one that um, initiates divorce. Women suffer the most in a marriage when they feel they have no influence over their partner. So, yeah. So, Harriet, that's what I liked about this author. Harriet was pretty personal. She talks about her family as well. Her father, Archie, was that kind of father that never spoke, never spoke his mind. Um, so yeah, she says that this, the idea of this book actually, uh, was into her mind after her father died. So chapter number two, a uh, voice lessons from my father. So Harriet, uh, that's why I think this book is really good because Harriet gives personal examples from her family. So her father, Archie, was the peaceful maker and Rose, her mother, was the decision maker. So Harriet started to be really annoyed that her father never had a voice. So uh, he was almost infantilized that at to a point that he's like, she felt like, I want to see my father being a man, being uh, able to speak his mind. Um, uh, her father liked to be the public uh, speaker, the dominant one, but back home he was doing everything that his wife told him to do. But, uh, yeah, he didn't have this thing of uh, a close relationship practically with anyone. He, um, he didn't have any real experience of getting to know another person and being known. Uh, no, I'm recuperating. Uh, I didn't went. Um, uh, thank you. I didn't went um, online on Sunday. So I'm recuperating today. Hope my stream is okay and it's not lagging. So this is the bug. So yeah. So Harriet uh, talks about her father. If the subject of the discussion was emotional, her father shut down. Um, she wa he was never prepared when he had to admit or react to the emotional life of others. Um, so Archie always forget to do the right and responsible thing. No, no resting day. Uh, he was actually kind of passive-aggressive and um, Harriet says that this need of being passive-aggressive actually shows that we are not controlling the situation. The, we're not able to express our anger, our, our will. So her father uh, chose to maintain this relationship uh, instead of developing a personality of its own, so um, yeah. So she talks about her parents, Archie and Rose, the kids of uh, Jew immigrants, came from Russia. They were both her parents, uh, used to be the special kid of mommy, so uh, Rose was the responsible one, Archie. In Archie's family, fights were never tolerated. So in her father's family, if you got a fight with a relative, that relative most likely might not ever talk to you. So Archie was like this because he had this background from his family. So a fight was equal, uh, I'm probably going to get excluded. So that's why Archie was very not into fighting, not into talking, not into anything, just because that's what what that's what he has seen in his family. So Archie 
the father of Harriet, the author, um, was very devoted to his mother. So, uh, of course, that's sad when a, a son has to be the ally of the mother in an unhappy marriage. It really screws up the kid. So, um, so uh, Archie, when growing up, um, started to believe that if he would use his own voice, uh, it would have been like an act of betrayal and he was afraid not to be abandoned. So, um, yeah, that was very, very sad. So, Harriet says that in families, usually there are triangles forming. Very interesting. So, when the father of Harriet got married, things complicated. Rose, the wife, the mother of the... Oh, so, Rose, the wife of Archie, did not, of course, have a great relationship with her mother-in-law. She actually started to hate her. So, um... Of course, the father, the, the man which is trapped in this triangle of the wife and of his mother um, can choose, can choose to express his voice, to, to, to say that, okay, this is my wife, you have to respect her. But, but there are men who are playing both sides and end up not, not happy. And Archie was one of these guys so, um, actually, Archie um, w was facing both women, but without actually speaking his mind. Uh, he lost self-respect like this. So, don't do that. If you, if you just sit passively, aggressively, and do not speak your mind, it's going to affect your... Uh, <laughs> my phone... It's going to affect your self-esteem. So it's very, very good to speak your mind and to say what you're thinking. But without being disrespectful, remember, having your voice doesn't mean to be uh, disrespectful. It just means to speak your mind. But in a respectful, calm way, when people actually be receptive to you. So, advice, when the woman is the one that always has to make things up, it's possible that she will suffer enormously too. So, women end up in therapy asking what's wrong with me instead of asking what's wrong with the relationship I'm being with. It's not fair to be in such a role because of a man that doesn't know how to cope with the emotions of others. So don't do this role for a man that doesn't know how to talk with his mother. Don't do that. It's his role, not yours. So a man that feels, a man which feels that he can't use the voice actually contradicts the idea of a man. That's what Harriet says. So he will try to prove his manhood through other ways. He will be tough, violent, aggressive. He will express it, uh, himself through gestures rather than words. Uh, he will find himself in a relationship in which he will not accept uh, that a, the other person tell him what he has to do. So he will not allow himself to be influenced or even impressed by the partner. So this kind of guys actually, they think they are strong, they're but they're practically they're weak because they are subconsciously choosing not to use their voice. They choose to be angry. They choose to be passive aggressive. They haven't found their voice. So, chapter number three. Our families. So, our native families. This is the place where we learned to talk slash not to talk. So the relationships that we have with our native family, with our family of origin, it's going to have a repercussion in our personal lives. So yeah, Harriet says that an ideal family would be a family where everybody could calmly express 
what they want even when they're angry. Such a family really doesn't exist, but the perfect family doesn't exist. So very important guys, when the problems of interacting from a generation uh, are remaining unsolved, they reappear in the next generation. So changing partners, changing it won't help you. You have to solve the way you interact in your family, with your mother, with your father, with your sister. It's crucial. This is the biggest important idea from the entire book, a revelation. So yeah. So any family can become dysfunctional at a point if uh, there are bad times if there are the bad people around the bad circle um, Even the effort of being yourself can become almost impossible when the emotional atmosphere from the family is overloaded so yeah So Herod says that we all have a family tradition that has evolved and this family this family tradition means that it's telling you how if it's good or bad to uh, tell when you're having success if it's good to cry if it's good to ask for help if it's good to protest if it's good to become sentimental if it's good to forgive we learn these things these patterns from our family and they're spreading through generations so yeah sometimes it's because we learn it from our family not to speak not to forgive not to show vulnerability so yeah so harry says when we can't express our pride for our accomplishments for our success there is a price and actually, it's also there. We also pay a price when uh, we think that women have this role of protector and support and denying their own aspirations. It's not good. So, actually, when you see a woman being like, she's the strong one in the family, she copes with everything, she can do that. That's a burden on that woman. That woman hasn't found her voice. It's not good, it's not natural. So she says that Harriet, the author, says that it's very good and that's a very good idea and I totally recommend it to you to do your homework and find find things about your family, your ancestor, what age do they have, uh, how do they manage. Um, the better you know your own history, the better it's easy to function and to be sure of your own story. So yeah... So the, uh, the family relationships which are imperfect, which are painful, are part of our growing experience. And even a negative experience can be a learning experience. So yeah, so this is something, some quotes I really like. I always put little hearts uh, when I really like the quotes. So a lot of ch children react to the painful silence or to the intensity of the emotions from their past uh, by developing a, a great character and the talent of talking bravely. Um, so we didn't pick our parents, which might have proved quite difficult, but we can pick the way we choose to talk with them. So if we learn, very important guys, pay attention to this, so if we learn to talk clearly and answer differently to our mother, to our sister, which are difficult people, we will be, uh, we will find th this to do much easier also in the relationships that we will develop with strangers. But of course that if you can't speak with your own mother, with your own father, with your own sister in a sincere way and tell them, okay, I don't like this, I don't like that. Of course that with stranger, it's going to be the same because you're repeating this pattern. Very important. Don't hide family problems under the rug and hope that it's going to be fine. It's not. You're going you're gonna to have troubles. So... 
there is no more i love this quote there is no special void there is that could have been freely developed if our family wouldn't cut our wings so our our self grows continuously through interacting with the others every relationship it's like a laboratorium when we can exercise using our voice so even if your family cut your wings you can still have the possibility to talk about it you can choose your reaction you can't choose your family but you can choose the way you interact with it once you get when you start to be aware of the negative things happening in your family. Chapter number four. Should you tell your vulnerable spots? Should you tell when you're vulnerable? So uh, actually Harriet talks uh, about a very nice uh, thing that she does. She had journals when she was like a child and she was writing all kind of stuff like kids do. And she says that now when she is invited to talk to students about writing, she passes through the classes her journals and kids are feeling very encouraged saying that, Oh, this is Harriet Lerner, the big author. Look what, what she was writing in her journals as a kid. So yeah, very, very good. So Harriet gives us a little personal insight on life. And I really love this. She says that now that she's at half of her life, she's pretty old. Um, she's very cautious when she decides who to speak, what to tell, when what, how much, and how to tell it. But either way, once she got older, she's more herself than anywhere else. Um, uh, once you grow old, um, you start to get to know each other better. You don't give up your individuality easier uh, as you used to do it when you were young. You don't betray yourself to keep a relationship uh, happy or just to be in one, once you get to the half of your life, the conscious of the fact that the future is limited made, makes you decide what really matters for you and talk wisely. Uh, so there is this possibility and I know a lot of people that talk too much, say too much, too soon because they are desperate to get close to somebody. So they are choosing to be in a relationship and they are losing their own individuality. Don't do that. Let things flow. Let things grow naturally. Do things when you feel you want to do them. Don't push yourself just to be in a relationship. Don't do that. Don't, don't play the bad patterns. So yeah... So when we are so being vulnerable doesn't mean uh, telling your secrets fast, uh, uh, making confessions. That's wrong. Being truly vulnerable means that you are getting wiser to uh, wait a little. So it's wise to wait a little to check if that person deserves to listen to your story, and if they are capable to understand it i'm sure it happened to you when you spoke your secrets and that person was like oh so no you have to make to be sure that that person is capable to understand maybe you have a difficult life story and if you rush to say it to anybody it shows you're desperate and that you don't know yourself you don't have your voice so having a voice means that you are capable to wait, you are capable to be wise, you are capable to be patient, to actually speak your story. When you feel it's right for you, don't let others pressure you like, tell me more about you, tell me that, tell me that. No, you don't have to pick yourself. Don't pick the relationship uh, uh, and keep yourself miserable. Don't do that. You are the most important. So yeah. So to value your, your privacy is not a way of hiding. Maybe it's your way of being. Some people are more private. Some people uh, reveal themselves much 
later and you have to respect that don't let people push you into their time frame you do things when you feel it's good for you and the right people will accept it if someone is gonna pressure you like tell me tell me your life story don't go there don't pick yourself pick yourself so yeah so uh, si uh, the silence can protect us from our own fears but long term will make us be ashamed and <laughs> this phone is keep on like going and going and going the, the adventures of streaming on a phone it's keep on moving and I, let's hope it's gonna sit like good now so actually remaining silent it's not a good option long term so um, if a relationship is closer and it's more uh, it's better um, the stronger will be the desire to find a way to reveal our secret self um, and it's very bad to not communicate to not be ourselves when a crisis will be it will come it will hit us so we have to let people see that if we need them if uh, to accept their help some people have a problem to accept help or to say they're not okay so it's not very good we can't ignore our anger our pain um, so a lot of people deny their pain they say i'm okay i'm okay i can do this i'm okay i'm so good and yeah don't do that um very important learn not to give advice <laughs> if you're not required learn to ask questions very important so very very important uh, sometimes the best choice is not to be of help the best choice is to listen Sometimes we hurry to give advice over advice over advice and this could show our own inability to face um, our problems. So if we offer, and the, I loved this perspective, if we offer too soon uh, advices, actually we make uh, the, other pe uh, the other person's task to find their own resources to handle the problem. So don't offer solutions too fast let other people find it and help them along the way so learning to listen uh, learning to ask questions can make the other feel the energy to find uh, the solution alone so that's what, don't rush into let me tell you what you should do let me no you're undermining the other person just listen be a good listener so yeah it's very very important so yeah so a lot of people have this problem with pain they're afraid to show that they're in pain or they're afraid to say that okay i have a health problem so uh, modern society says that the cool people don't let themselves dragged in the in the in the waters of pain so yeah this is what society tells you it, it's not cool to be in pain but it's it's okay to be in pain sometimes so yeah so uh, a lot of people expect from us to transform the ugliest defeat in an opportunity of personal growth so that's not every time so this is like a consumerist uh, attitude to the experiences of life yeah so yeah it's better to learn to show vulnerability it's very very good a lot of women have this problem um, yeah there are those type of women that always function at the maximum capacity and they're afraid like they manage to do this and that and that and sometimes they are just afraid to admit that i can't do this anymore i can't do this anymore i'm tired i'm i'm terminated it's okay it's okay to admit that it's okay they are 
um, there are two types of individual, those that, those that are supra-functioning and sub-functional. So over-functional and sub-functional. The over-functional does it all. It's like um, they, they, are, they have a difficult time to show vulnerability. Uh, they, they are those type of people that people say, oh, you can always count on them. They're super strong. They're super, super, super everything. And the under-functional people, the, those that are under their level of functioning, they're like um, less competent in stress. They invite the other per people to take charge. Uh, they're not comfortable making decisions in difficult situations. And they're almost with a tag of the selfish, the problem kid, uh, the irresponsible. So, yeah. So, it's actually very necessary to change that way in which people perceive us. Um, so, yeah. This is a self-pilot. So, you're an autopilot when you do that. Showing people that you're always capable. You're yeah, learn not to do that. Learn to show if you're vulnerable. So if you're weaker, learn to show your strong side. Uh, so actually, uh, Harriet says that uh, having such habits are usually at the beginning, it's like strands of silk. But with time, just because you don't change that habit, those strands of silk of comfort uh, um, grows into chains. So actually your habits of always being the same, always not showing your stronger or your, your weaker side uh, makes you being trapped. So if you're over-functioning, you could be uh, thinking that the others have nothing to offer to you. Maybe you should start sharing your vulnerable side. If you're excessively under-functional, you should do the opposite. Amplify your advantages, your competence. So this is the, the method of having your voice. So this is very, very important. Chapter number five uh, about dissimulation. So having a voice doesn't mean to always speak your mind. So, an authentic voice actually means uh, the ability to evaluate what we want to communicate and what we hope to accomplish. So, actually being the best version of yourself, and I had to agree with Harriet on this, being the best version of yourself um, means that you could have like a good control on your reactions and maybe actually sometimes faking it like faking that maybe you're angry but maybe just fake that you're calm just because you need that situation to be under control so very very important so she talks about an adventure of her on her kayak and she was very uh, uh, unprepared and angry and but she had to change her attitude. She was very insecure, Harriet. And she noticed that if she was insecure, people were getting insecure. So she says, I had to change my reaction and pretend, at least pretend I got this. So she pretended and the experience changed. So, yeah. So she says, in a family. So if you have family members that mock you, or they gossip you, or they are afraid that, oh, she's never going to make it, or you're never going to make it. Try to uh, fake, to fake it a little. Try to show your most competent side, your most, do that, do that. So, she says that in relationships, it is possible that through your own behavior, you're exhausting the other person or you're accentuating your own negativity. So it's possible that you are the one that accentuates your unbalance. So, um, yeah. So you can actually sabotage the relationship. Uh, actually, 
you know, when you're in a relationship and you say, I don't want this relationship to go into that direction, but somehow through I don't know what um, bad luck, that relationship is going exactly where you don't want to go it. That's because you are on autopilot and you always react the way you always react. Change that. Think a little. So, yeah. So, Harriet says about the pattern of the one that is the follower and the ones that is the distant person. There are always like this couple or uh, he, uh, she wants him and she chases and he moves along and like, don't chase me anymore, just walk away, you know? Those kind of people that I want more of you and the more I want of you, you want less of me and there's that dynamic of I chase you and you run away or you chase me and I run away. That's very unhealthy. So what you should do? What should you do in that kind of relationship? So once Harriet suggests that once this pattern is settled, we should fake it. <laughs> so let's see if she is the chaser. If a, if a woman chases a guy, what should she do in order to break this pattern? She should stop chasing. She should stop just find different things to do in your life. Stop chasing that partner because you're always going to push them away even more. Focus on yourself. Um, focus on yourself. What if you would show instead of chasing? What if you would show like, okay, I think I'm having some issues about this relationship. I'm not sure instead of saying, oh, I want this so much, so much, so much. So experimenting with a different voice can teach us that what we think and feel, it's not settled for good. So yeah. So she talks about the marriage on a breaking point, about Tim and Jill. Tim was chasing Jill. Jill didn't want more of him. So she suggested Tim to start working on himself. But he needed, he needed to work on himself instead of insisting for that woman to stay into his life. So pick yourself. Pick okay, you're having a bad relationship, it's not working the way you want it, but maybe it doesn't work that way because you should work on yourself. You can't change the partner, you can only change yourself. So, yeah. So, what does it mean? When you, uh, when you realize that you have to start to work on yourself and you do, you have a solid foundation uh, uh, of yourself. Even if that person... Uh, goes back to you or not that's very important so yeah so this is the good kind of faking so uh, when you want a person but you can't have him or her then fake that okay I'm not so desperate and start working on yourself but it's not always good to fake don't uh, don't avoid um, don't uh, don't uh, put that wall just say okay i think i should work on myself but don't put that wall like okay i don't need you bye bye no that's not having a voice that's actually the opposite of having your own voice so yeah so we can't always and i really love this we can't always know what really happens in a relationship until we don't change our behavior so what starts with dissimulation can um, can lead you to a better knowledge of yourself, better knowledge of yourself. So actually, when I pretend, Harriet says, when I pretend that I'm brave, I might actually become braver. So that's really, really good. So she talks more about the people that overfunction, the people that always do everything. So this kind of people learn uh, tend to to think that we know better, that we know better for us, we know better for others. Um, we never show vulnerability. We never show weakness. So yeah. So very useful tip. So when you're having a conversation with somebody and there are 
those kind of people that always dominate the conversation, you know, they talk and talk and talk and talk. It's not fair to let them talk and then be frustrated that they always talk. It's not fair to allow a person to dominate the conversation and then blame them for it. Stop them. It's not fair. So, yeah. So, it's not going to happen fast. The changes that you're going to do in uh, interacting with your family and with it's not going to happen overnight. People uh, are are quite resilient in front of change, but it matters to uh, the direction, to change the direction, not necessarily the speed with which we change it. So make little changes. It's going to be slow, but it's going to work. So yeah. So actually, actually, a tip for uh, interacting with your family, it's, it's not making anyone a favor if um, we don't speak to a family member about our problems and about what makes us unhappy. Uh, yeah, when we, everything we do is to listen and to try to help, we are behaving like that family member has nothing to offer. So actually, it's good to approach problems. It's good to t talk about it. Don't be like, oh, my mother will never listen. Oh, my father will never. You're undermining them. You're not giving them a chance. So yeah, try to change that pattern. So actually, we minimize the others when we don't give the possibility uh, to help us or we behave like, okay, I don't need your help. Um, actually our self-esteem is hurting them because we are incapable to present ourselves openly with good and bad with qualities and vulnerabilities so being strong being having your own voice doesn't mean not to show vulnerability actually do show it do it's it's good it's good so it's Harriet says, uh, talks about her own family. She has the sister Susan that is over functioning. She was like the perfect child, and Harriet learned the author was the black sheep of the family. Uh, yeah. So she says that it's very dangerous to idealize a child because that child will never know to say, uh, okay, I don't know this, or I, I can't deal with this, or yeah. So she talks about her sister. Her sister was very capable, very uh, she was like excellent student, but she always had trouble with men. So yeah, a lot of problems with men. And actually Harriet was moved when Susan went to therapy and start admitting to her family, to her father, to everybody that she has this problem. She can't pick the right guy and it was a bit better. So Archie uh, reacted well to his daughter telling that uh, she can't pick the right guy so yeah really really nice so actually after Susan admitted having a problem and what uh, going to therapy a lot of her friends uh, helped her uh, with this and tried to introduce her with guys and one of her friends actually uh, introduced her with a guy that uh, was about to be her future husband so actually Susan improved her relationships uh, because she allowed herself to be known and understood in a different way she she was the real her not the ideal one so very very important so after Susan uh, admitted she had problems with men uh, even her father changed a little so that little change uh, mattered a lot so yeah don't don't uh, don't act like your parents are incapable to understand you don't act like I'm never gonna say that I'm never gonna say that no you're doing a harm to yourself and you're doing harm to the others so yeah Chapter number seven. That's very important. When you hold your parent, you, when you held your parents responsible, accountable. So yeah. 
So Aurora, what is this chapter about? It's about telling your parents when you are um, when you do not approve them. Yeah, just it's very important. So very very important. So when somebody uh, offends us or behaves badly, actually we all uh, we react with anger or with through such a silence. But such a reaction, it's it's getting it's leaving that other person to get away. So when we're angry only or when we are silent, actually we're protecting the other. Instead, we should calmly speak. Okay, I am being upset on you right now and let me tell you why because if you get silent or angry you just let people walk away with it don't see but if you think that oh i'm angry and i'm affecting them no you're protecting them because uh, you don't speak you don't get to the core of the conversation you just are flooded with angriness and with emotion and yeah so who would I have thought that if you're silent and angry, you actually protect the other person? So very important, the quality of the voice that you'll be having in the other relationship depends on how honest you are with your own family. So again, it's not about the partner. No, it's about your own family because in relationships, you are going to bring the pattern of interaction from your own family so it's not the partner it's you and the way you react so actually uh, don't uh, there is this habit of people writing long letters or long text messages um, to always tell like I'm gonna say you exactly what la 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 in a long aggressive message no that's bad that's a shutting down of communication actually when we criticize people very important when you criticize people we invite them not to pay attention to what we're saying because of course that if you're criticizing someone they're going to get defensive and they're not going to listen to you so mission not accomplished so yeah very very important uh, when so notice yourself notice yourself if you remain silent if you talk angry it's hurting yourself so don't do that anymore don't do that anymore so yeah very important she has a lot of examples in the books from couples from her therapy uh, yeah. So she says that a balanced conversation, a serious and responsible conversation can get you to reach the source of the hurt feelings and change them. So the only way to learn how to communicate is communication. So practice, practice, practice. Try to speak better, better, better. If your first attempt fails, second, keep on trying calmly to get to the bottom of the situation. So, yeah. So, actually, it's very important, Harriet says, to learn to listen. Because this is how you learn to control even your own voice. Uh, we can uh, be more calm when we realize that a bad reaction of someone uh, is... Um, is fueled by the anxiety and uh, by the past of the other person not because they don't love you it's very important it is a proof of maturity not to take things personally and to understand that the reaction of the other person uh, can uh, can have a mm, better connection with them than with us so uh, most of the times people react in certain way uh, and it has nothing to do with you actually it has to do with their own traumas their own problems um, so when your parents are being negative uh, take it as an information about their way of coping with their own anxiety so talking about differences it's not the same thing with trying to convince or change a person um, 
so very important in dealing with your family when you talk uh, with your family with a uh, about a spicy thing like a really painful problem and you want to talk about it with your family uh, we should be focused on the things that we want to say about us rather than insisting to get a certain reaction so very important if you still feel the need to have a specific answer from that person our need is an indicator that we're not ready to approach that conversation so if you're approaching a conversation with the hope of changing that person or forcing them to see your way it's a sign that you're not ready you're not ready so actually the best way is to put questions and then listen second approach your differences so if you're overwhelmed with emotions you won't be able to tap into your natural creativity and on common sense of dealing with reality you'll become defensive you'll become angry so yeah so this is a great metaphor um, that harriet talks about that our human mind is like the is like the surface of the ocean when the storm is around we are reacting very violently but deep down within there is that calm and we just have to reach brilliant metaphor so very very important so the real challenge is to know our potential that we won't get stuck in a narrow a mindset that will actually be useless so don't react in in uh, in a way that won't allow you to express your own voice so if you're having an argument and it's really intense really intense stop a little ask questions don't rush into answering to the other person so be calm be calm so if, when you do this you're actually inviting the other person to be held accountable for their action instead of being defensive when people are being defensive they are no longer pay attention to the fact that they hurt you but you start to remain calm and tell them you've hurt me and what you said was very offensive and actually you're you're making that person held accountable but if you scream if you yell if you behave badly if you make them defensive if you criticize them you're actually inviting that person to not admit so you're actually protecting them and let them walk away with it so yeah yeah so the most likely that people will listen when we make them understand that we love them and they're important to us so yeah if people know that you are loving them they're more likely to be open to listen to you chapter number seven love can fool you <laughs> so um she talks about that uh, beginning period of relationships when you think everything is perfect but she says that a potential partner if a potential partner doesn't want to stay with us after we told them secrets about ourselves um, then it's better uh, it will be better off without that person so again we will be better off without that person if that person doesn't want to listen talking about our passions about our uh, desire to grow spiritually about our ambitions or if that person stops you when you start to talk about insecurities fears or uh, a painful experience so the other person has the right to know uh things about us to get to know us in a deeper level in order to make a good decision about ourselves and about the relationship without fantasizing and without us so actually it is fair towards your partner to be open to be but remember don't give in too much too soon but in the same time do not withhold because our partner has to know 
because if your partner idealizes you or has like this fantasy and no it's not fair they should know the truth so yeah so when we are staying in a relationship a longer time and we also evaluate it with our mind not only with our heart then we begin to test the relationship so uh, treating seriously the misunderstandings will bring you a clarity of your voice it will uh, make you be able to pay attention to the voice of your partner so yeah so Harriet says if the relationship that we will be having would be only with people similar to us then our personal growth will be next to zero so she talks about talking and listening to the other before very important before uniting your emotional and financial help you can't pick your kids your parents or, or your relatives but you can pick your partner preferably after courtship so very important talk about money talk about emotions before getting married or moving together things should be talked through so yeah very very important so when you're having problems when you're having things that bother you uh use um use phrases that start with i i feel i want i don't talk about that or be like you're always careless you're always like this it's not gonna be beneficial so yeah so we have to be aware what you are looking to a partner and we should understand that our love will never have the power to create something that never existed from the get-go we should not get married because we're, we have fallen in love. We should really analyze our fundamental and our beliefs. So yeah, it's not indicated to get married with someone and then complain about it uh, because you hoped to change certain things. No, 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 don't do that. So yeah. So she says that it's very important to be a to be very careful and she says that in the name of love we're willing to lower our uh, standards to um to be silent about things uh, and to abandon friendships um we can uh, yeah we can do that so we it's necessary to permanently analyze that person through conversation and observation so important uh when your lover says that he doesn't want to visit your family or all of his girlfriends are losers that's an important clue about that person so harriet says if you need a detective if you feel like you need a detective to find things about that person it's a good indicator you should not be with that person <laughs> so yeah So the most important thing that we have to listen to it's your own voice so um, if you trust our, ourselves we will know but, uh, deep down um, there are some behaviors that we won't tolerate there are some limits that we won't cross even if we uh, made a bad choice um, so having a voice having a voice means to keep the values the beliefs uh our things that are not negotiable so very important this is the most important thing so if we have the possibility of choosing we have to choose discussions over silence we have to maintain um a behavior that it's uh it's good um in comparison with our values and our beliefs we have to save ourselves very 
very important. We learn very many things about a partner when we notice how he behaves with and towards their friends and their family. So if if yeah, if that partner behaves badly with their family or with their friends, they're not going to do it better with you. So pay attention to that. So even if you're in a couple that it's in four years or 40 years, it's necessary to keep on dealing the differences um, uh, between us. The relationships are hurting when we become excessively tolerant with the differences that we expect too little of that person. No, that's not very, very good. So, chapter number eight. Married, where do you set your boundaries? So, yeah, she talks about um, her husband, Steve, that refuses to talk to her when she behave when she talks badly. So she says, I'm not, he says, I'm not going to take your bad words and your bad behavior. Come to me and talk to me when you talk to me respectfully. Very, very important. So he demanded to be treated like an equal and not to be offended very very important so yes set boundaries so just like a child a partner will try to always test the limits of the relationship until the other person will say enough and they will mean it so that moment is our own limit that we will choose not to go over so yeah so actually when we assume a definite position in any relationship something like okay in example father every time i'll see that you're drinking i'm getting up and walking away it's necessary that we do this for ourselves and not against the other person so you have to know yourself in order to put those limitations so yeah so Continuing a couple relationship, it means to be able to take important decisions. Stop focusing on the flaws of your partner. Uh, uh, focus on your inner voice. Very, very important. So, actually, we are minimizing a person when we tolerate um, disturbing behavior, when we don't have uh, great expectations when we don't test them to see what possibilities appear so actually a guy will lose self-respect if grace accepts the behavior uh, of disrespect so yeah very very important so don't take less and save so if um it's very very important so if you blame people and if you mock them it's not a, a good way to produce a change it's definitely not gonna produce a sincere talk so don't mock uh, don't mock the partner chapter number nine I can't live like this how do you say um, how do you transmit an ultimatum in a marriage so yeah so actually when we realize that we can live without a certain relationship uh, it's only then when we can talk speak and act uh, really clearly in that relationship it's very important to save yourself and respect yourself for that decision uh, yeah so he talks about friendship relationships outside the marriage especially with the opposite sex uh, and harriet says that at the beginning of her marriage she allowed her husband to have friendship relationships even when she felt threatened but once she started to grow older she started to protest it and yeah the most couple expect their partners to keep a healthy distance in their relationship. Yeah, I totally agree. You should always put your husband and your family first. Uh, people who maintain wishy-washy relationships, uh, friend, uh, friendship relationships with opposite sex and don't set boundaries, that's not good. And accepting that, it's bad for yourself. So no, don't do that.
Yeah, so actually it's very good to be able to walk away from the relationship. Um, so when the pain provoked by the situation becomes uh, bigger than the fear of the unknown, in that moment we find the courage to speak differently than before and to act for ourselves. Uh, yeah, don't uh, don't throw the divorce uh, threat in too fast. Talk about the divorce, or don't. So actually, talk about it. Uh, if you're thinking about divorce, you should tell your partner that you're thinking about that. Yeah. So there, are, Harriet says four reasons why you should talk about the fact that you're thinking about divorce. It's not fair to hide this towards the partner it should never happen unexpectedly um, so three a partner will be uh, will be will ha have a chance to decide if he will make the changes if he knows that it's so bad that you're thinking about divorce so give your partner that chance and um, if you talk about divorce the possibility of that will appear to yourself even more clearly so yeah don't talk about divorce if you think your partner will become violent uh, in such a case you should uh, look for support and assure yourself the physical and um, uh, protection and safety so yeah but if you decided very important if you decided to walk away from the relationship it's not fair to Put your partner in conversation that suggests that you are still willing to make effort to salvage it. So don't play it like wishy-washy. If you really will not want this, no matter what, say it. If you're willing to work it, then say it again. So yeah. Avoid distancing and emotional deconnecting. Um yeah actually if you want to hear your own voice don't amplify it and don't yell it so yeah so you should be the role model of behavior if you want it so don't criticize your partner for not being what you wanted rather try to be an example yourself so before rushing to give ultimatums uh, before uh, searching for a lawyer uh, try to see what happens if you're being a positive person. So chapter number 10, how to create a positive atmosphere. Um, very, very important. Nobody appreciates critique if it happens in a think about in a in a atmosphere of disrespect. Warm the warm the atmosphere, be more positive talk about things but don't do it don't criticize people yeah very very important so if you're experiencing problems with your relationship start to work on the relationships from your family as well critic and silence it's a recipe for divorce so not very good always talk about it um yeah. So, to guide the relationship in a positive direction, at least one of the partners has to start to create a warm atmosphere in a relationship. So, yeah. Very, very important. Be nice. You should be nice when a person is being rude. Um... Yeah. But don't always do that because you can you can end up tolerating a bad behavior or disrespectful behavior. So yeah. So anger, anger signals the fact that that person uh crossed some boundaries that shouldn't be crossed. So actually the decision to not change ourselves is a sure way to keep things uh, uh, in the same level or make the relationship worse. So yeah. She talks about Gottman. 
um, about the uh, repairing attempts. A repair attempt is when somebody tries to um, to make things better, to repair it. I mean, you're having a bad argument or one of them starts smiling or make a joke. That's a repair attempt. So to not try to fix the situation, uh, it's an alarm signal. So yeah, very good idea. Make a, a time out, a stop. Make a stop rule. Uh, you can invoke the stop rule when uh, when the anger is getting out of control and it will most likely damage your relationship. So invoke a stop rule then. So very, very important. So yeah. So if we think about it, we all know how to reach the soul of our partner. So, uh, but being angry, it's very important uh, to stop that anger. So yeah. So actually try to appreciate your partner. Try to try to find that power in yourself to not be negative. Try to express positivity and create positivity. Um yeah. So constructive critic and the uh the warmth of our that we give. Um will create a positive environment. Chapter number 11, silent men and angry women. So yeah, that's a recipe for disaster. Um, actually, the man suffered the deepest loss of voice in the triangles with their mother and their uh, wife. They feel like they have to pick. So yeah, it's not very good it's very good for that man to be able to set boundaries and to take care of the things that he has to take care of not to let things in the matter the matters in the hand of the woman so yeah very very important so yeah so actually a lot of men have issues in their own families uh, they're not expressing their emotions towards their mothers so that's why they're probably not doing that with their uh, wives as well so yeah so the man very important the man that choose silence in the relationship with their women are gonna pay a very high price yeah not very good uh, when the men disappear and let the women fight like the mother-in-law and the wife and that's bad um, that's like you're putting so much pressure on the woman next to you and then that's, that's not fair and you should uh, um, find your own voice to uh, let that woman be your woman and not be your fighter in the ring that you don't have the courage to step into chapter number 12 it's hard to accept critique. Uh, so how to stay close when you want to fight back? Um, yeah. We have to be capable to listen. It's a good advice. Um, actually, when we tolerate lack of respect, we are destroying the self-esteem of both parts. So yeah. Having the voice, finding your voice, means to think about how we want to deal with a certain relationship, to not repeat patterns of uh, behavior from our family. Um, it's very, very important. So in family relationships, um, a change is a slow process. So don't expect your relationship with your family to change very, very fast. So yeah. So if you want a recipe for the failure of every relationship, uh, you should, <laughs> if you refuse to change and wait until the other person changes, that's recipe for disaster. So learn to not do that. Also learn to listen. Uh, learn with your open heart. Do not, uh, do not listen in order to only give a fast answer.
answer. Listen in order to understand the other better. Yeah. Don't, don't, uh, don't criticize, don't be overly critic. Listen, so this is like 10 advice uh, to, about what to do and not to do. Uh, listen the person without planning your <laughs> answer. Ask questions. Do not get defensive. Apologize. Never criticize a person that criticizes you. Uh, be calm. Um, say when you have a different opinion. Um, interrupt a useless conversation. Um, answer to the important questions. And when you're flooded, uh, just say it. I'm being flooded. I can't talk right now. So, yeah. Chapter 13. Apologize. Don't hope too much. <laughs> so, sometimes, sometimes, it, we are not going to get the apologies. But... <clears throat> When you truly apologize, when you truly apologize, you don't expect the other person to do anything, not even to forgive. <clears throat> A lot of people do this. I apologize because I hope that you forgive me, but don't do that. Just apologize because you genuinely realize you did the wrong thing. Sometimes some people will never apologize. The kids that were always accused, blamed, criticized by their parents. So, yeah, so a lot of people blame themselves so much for their mistakes that then they have no longer emotional reservoir to apologize. Yeah, so yeah, so for, uh, for some people to apologize is associated with feeling badly, with losing power and control. And yeah, that's very, very sad. Apologizing is not about control. So yeah. Very, very interesting. So don't use apologizes that have no value. Like, I'm sorry you got upset because of my comment. Uh, yeah, that's not a good apologize. It's like, uh, I'm sorry that you are so sensitive. No, I. you should formulate it like I'm sorry I offended you so I'm sorry I made a comment so yeah so uh, and, uh, uh, when you completely uh, fall into that habit of always apologizing and never changing that's not good so what matters if that person corrects their behavior and they are careful not to repeat their mistake so sometimes people apologize just to make you shut up and, and it's not okay. So saying I'm sorry does not um, replace the effort to heal a betrayal, to make that partner trust us again. Yeah. Very, very interesting. So the... If the blame and the shame are very unbearable, the most difficult will be the, for the person that uh, made the mistake to accept the fact that he did that mistake, to empathize with that person. The one that made um, the mistake should go to therapy to be responsible for his actions in order to move on. So, yeah. Uh, we have to understand that people can't be more sincere with us than they are with themselves that's a good 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 quote so actually uh for a person to really apologize they have to have a lot of self-esteem and some people do not have that so yeah so actually when somebody hurt and betrayed another person it's not enough to say i'm sorry i'm um, yeah so it's very complicated it's very very complicated don't speak because you want to receive apologies or validation speak because you want to focus on what you want to say about yourself so yeah 
our capacity, this is a very good quote, the capacity to uh, take responsibility and to have remorse is actually more connected about how much self-love and self-esteem has that person. So we can't give that to the other person. What we can do is to keep alive the memory of the humanity of that person. And every person is better and more complex than the worst thing they have done. So yeah. Chapter number 14. Uh, negativity. When you no longer have the patience to listen. So... Uh, when our capacity to listen, we should find a way to close the conversation or to put it into different direction. So yeah, don't let that person talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. Just tell, okay, I think I just try to stop it, but in a respectful way. So we should learn to listen. So to listen the way you have to listen, it's the core of intimacy and connection. When we're capable to listen to the other with affection and attention, that person is feeling validated. So it's very important. It's a gesture of self-love to protect ourselves and stop from uh, listening and listening and listening. So yeah, self-respect. Self-respect is very, very important. That's going to help you quite a lot. So sometimes a person doesn't know how to remain connected in the relationship other than uh, criticizing. So yeah, very important. Don't avoid a subject. Don't avoid the subject for too long. Uh, in your family, if you want to approach something and you're afraid, try to do it with humor. Try to do it in a pleasant way. Um, yeah. So put questions that um, make you think. So put questions. Don't make judgments. Put questions. It's very important to put a lot of questions. Actually, the relationship is going to get stronger when both sides are putting boundaries and they uh, end up um, uh, talking about even unpleasant things. Chapter number 15, The Sound of Silence. How to discover your voice when you're being rejected. So, yeah. So don't don't get into that silent silent mode. Um, it's very damaging. Um, yeah. So it's difficult to give up to the fantasies that promise you that if you will keep on being angry, the other person will be forced to admit their uh, their flaws and they will come to forgive uh, to ask for forgiveness but Harriet says that if all of these things didn't happen already it's very likely that that person that hurt you never understand your pain and maybe just because you sit in the four walls um, uh, suffering being angry hoping that person will forgive you maybe that other person is having a great time so the only the fact that you're the only one that suffer could be the best argument to detach from a negative relationship. So yeah, sometimes anger actually keeps you connected to that person. And sometimes it's better to leave anger away. So if you want to make sure that that person won't listen to you, just write a long letter trying to express why you haven't been understood. So don't do that. So what uh, that's what I really loved, uh, what Harriet Lerner says, and I totally agree with that. When we neglect and we treat badly another person actually we treat badly ourselves so the way we behave to other person actually talks more about ourselves so yeah so she talks about a couple that started to uh, have a good relationship the sex was amazing but they didn't speak with each other they didn't get to know each other 
and I love this quote of Harriet Lerner about marriage getting married just for the sex it's like going to London just because you get peanuts and free bagels that's not the purpose right <laughs> so don't don't get married just because that is good you need to emotionally connect with that person so no so actually so a lot of people yes have this fantasy that it's person we're gonna come and apologize and understand them and connect and everything but sometimes it's unnecessary to let that um vision go and yeah learn to give up learn to give up learn to just sometimes you just have to accept defeat and you have to stand up and walk away so yeah so yeah you have i love this quote you have to learn to stand up from the table when there are no more they're no longer serving love so yeah but uh, for with the family you can't do that we have to we have to stand on the table and trying to fix it because it's a family. So yum. So when it comes to family, forgiveness can be the greatest gift. Um, yeah, but it's it's important to try. So actually very important is to be loyal to yourself you have to be honest with yourself if you're not honest with yourself we will live in incoherent lives disconnected we can't love ourselves we can't love the others having an authentic voice doesn't mean to talk with anger with reactivity with critique actually it's about being more able to talk when you're angry but calm creatively wiser uh, the clarity of our voice reflects our self-awareness so this is about our, our inner voice so having an inner voice doesn't always uh, doesn't mean that you always have to talk it means also to listen very very important so i cannot express enough how important it is to listen so when people hurt, get hurt, uh, they suffer two times. Once because they live the painful um, event and second time because the members of the family or the friends don't want to hear them or they don't express their desire. Uh, yeah. So nothing destroys and creates more damage than a policy of we don't ask, you don't answer. So don't sit in that painful, painful silence. Yeah. Very important that um, through conversation, but also uh, th uh, through silence, we uh, can build a, a complex personality or, or a worse personality. The way that we use our voice determine the quality of our relationships, makes us understand who we really are, how our lives shows, and in what directions we are heading. So very, very important. This is the end. So this book actually was such a revelation for me because if you're not solving the relationships with your family, the way you interact, the way you behave, you're actually gonna replicate the pattern with your partners. And it's very important to not do that because it's it's not gonna take you in good places. Again, a lot of things have to be talked through. Don't get married if you don't if you didn't have important conversations about money, about kids, about how do you see things. Don't don't rush into that thing. It's very important to have a lot of conversation, observation and things like that this is this is really a good good book a must buy for everybody so yeah what i'm going to talk about the next um this this sunday it's gonna be the latest number of national geographic uh 
it's very very interesting i can't wait to talk about it with you and um yeah it's it's uh, mostly about this pandemic and a lot of things happening in the world so yeah so thank you for listening uh, try to buy this book actually this is the kind of book i think i'll get back through <laughs> through my life so yeah and um have a great great day and bye i'm gonna take the phone and <laughs> stop the stream bye